Hello there, my name's Richard and this is my walkthrough of Neuron Safari, which is a Minecraft activity which allows you to explore neuroscience in an interesting and fun way, I hope. And I've been building this uh, for the past year or so and it is meant to kind of give you a bit of an introduction to how neuroscience is and what neuroscience means. So neuroscience is the study of the brain and what the brain is made of and how it works. And I'm a neuroscientist and I've been building this as part of my PhD at the University of Edinburgh. Now, what this originally was, was a safari as the name suggests. So what was ideally meant to happen is I was meant to sit down with someone who was interested and we would go and play through the game together and I would give them a little bit of a tour through what neuroscience is. So we can't do that obviously, uh, we're all a little bit stuck inside a lot of the time at the minute and not able to meet up in large groups so I have taken it online and made it free to download for anyone who wants to download it and uh, there'll be a link somewhere on the page where you've watched this video so please do download if you wish for any type of Minecraft that you might have, it should work for all of them. If it doesn't, send me an email and I will do my best to make sure get it working for you. But yes, so this is my little tour through Neuron Safari. For those of you that want to see what it's like before you play it, uh, and also for those of you that maybe don't have a copy of Minecraft but still want to see what's going on. I'm going to start with the skull zone. So this zone is designed to show you where the brain is. So that skull that you're seeing right now is actually a real child skull, which is pretty cool, I think. And I've uh, given three different routes of entry inside to see where this brain would be inside this skull. So we're going to go and select the right eye socket here, I think. Uh, we're going to take a little trip through. So I've put a lot of facts into this game as well. So you'll see some of them pop up on the screen as we're going through. So the idea is that we're going to take a little tour in here and see. And you can see how large the eye sockets are in comparison to the rest of the skull. They're actually quite big. And if you look at your own, see how big your eye sockets are. And that your skull is not just one bone, it's actually lots of bones all together. And here we are. Here we are inside where the brain would be. So I didn't put the brain inside the skull because it would be we wouldn't be able to move. So it's quite squishy in there. It's a bit of a tight fit. And it takes up most of what your skull is. Here we go. So this is the brain zone. And right now we are in the back of the brain here. And we're going to go have a little ride out to see what it looks like from the outside. So the brain is actually split into two lobes, two hemispheres. And it has a little connections in between them, these little bridges. But they kind of can work independently of one another. And the left hand lobe controls the right hand side of your body. And the right hand lobe controls the left hand side of your body. Um, now you can see that it's actually quite wrinkly, even in Minecraft. Uh, you can see all these wrinkles and folds. And this is extra surface area, so this allows us to put you pack even more brain matter into a small space inside the skull. Now, the brain is interesting because it's made up of something called neurons. So you can't see on this, but we're going to see them later on. And each one of these zones actually has a different job to do. So the red zone is the cerebellum, which is important in movement and balance. We've got the occipital zone, which is in green, and that's to do with helping you see and processing your vision. And you can see it's quite interesting because that's actually in the back of your brain. So your eyes have to send information all the way to the back of your brain. And we don't really know why that happens, but it's an interesting thing. And then the orange bit there is the parietal lobe. So that is processing things like touch and temperature and pressure and pain. And then you have your temporal lobe, which is my favorite. So I've done a lot of work with the temporal lobe. And this is responsible for hearing and language and also for memory. So also for making you be able to think and remember things like what I'm doing right now, trying to remember what all the parts of the brain do. And the frontal lobe, the final bit, that is to do with your executive function. So that is to do with your reasoning and your decision making and your uh, ability to have emotions and plan things. It does a lot, actually. It's quite a, a powerful bit of the brain. And it's also one of the bits of the brain which some people regard as being uniquely human a little bit in that we have quite a big frontal lobe compared to other animals. So yeah, so right now we're going to go and actually take a trip inside. Now, inside this brain, actually, there's not very much to see. It's actually quite a lot of 
empty space. And that's because we haven't modeled the neurons inside the brain. So the brain is made up of these cells, these tiny, tiny little, you can kind of think of them almost as like little mini factories, but you're made up of cells and every living thing is made up of cells. And there's a lot of them. There is 86 billion neurons inside your brain, which is a huge amount. So we couldn't put them into Minecraft, all of them, because that would have been crazy. So we've done a a version of looking like what the brain looks like when you squish it around. But inside, it's all the different connections between these different cells and these different neurons. And so we can't model that in here, but it does make for actually quite a cool inside space that we can kind of have a look around. And yes, so I've not really done built much in here, but I thought it'd be pretty cool. You can probably even build your own little city in here or something. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I mean, feel free to, if you download the game, uh, the world, then you feel free to do whatever you want with it and uh, let me know and show me what you've done. It'd be fantastic to see. But yes, so we'll move on, I think. Let's move on to the Neuron Zone. Here we are. So, Neuron Zone. Yes, I did put the name up there. Uh, <laughs> makes it easy to remember where we are. So the neurons, these are the cells that make up that brain that we saw before. Now you can see they're actually a very strange looking shape and they've got these kind of branchy bits at the top and then they've got this kind of weird capsule bit in the middle and then this long stringy thing coming out of them at the other side. And they all look slightly different but they all have these similar features. Now the stringy bits at the top, they're called dendrites. So these are a bit like the ears of the neuron and these are listening to information coming from other neurons so it's kind of neurons what they do is they kind of talk to one another and they talk to one another using this axon so this long stringy bit that comes out of this red neuron you can see here so the axon's a bit like the mouth and then the dendrites are like the ears and a single neuron can be listening to up to 10,000 different other neurons because i say we've got 86 billion neurons inside your brain so that's a lot and all what's happening is all these ears are listening to all this information and then sending information that they think is important to the cell body, that little capsule thing in the middle. And then if it's deemed important, then it's sent down to the mouth where that information is then transferred. And it's all done through electricity and through chemicals. And we'll see a little bit of a close-up of these dendrites later on in the, one of the other zones. It's an interesting shape and they're all designed like this so that they can function correctly and they're very interesting. These are called pyramidal neurons. Some people think they look a little bit like pyramids. These don't really look like pyramids. Um, but the cell body normally, if you see them under a microscope, do look a little bit like a pyramid shape. These ones don't, but that's because it's difficult putting a neuron into Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look and see how these neurons work. So as I say, these neurons are cells and they're a bit like mini machines, mini factories. And so we're going to see how they stay alive. And so this zone is the DNA factory zone, and this is a bit of an interactive game. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk you through a bit of this, but I'm not going to show you everything so that I don't want to spoil everything. We're going to take a little train ride now through a bit of DNA. Uh, DNA is a little bit hard to explain, but it uh, stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. So that's why we say DNA, because it's a bit of a mouthful. And DNA is a bit like a recipe book. So every organism, every living thing on the planet has DNA. And that DNA is a recipe that tells you how to build that organism. And each cell contains a copy of that DNA. And they read different bits of that DNA in order to be able to do the jobs that they do. Now, these long, giant things here, these are proteins. And this is what the DNA factory makes, is these giant proteins here that are built up of smaller building blocks called amino acids. And yes, I did build all of those by hand. It took a long time. But yes, so right now we're going to go through and go and see what this DNA is. So what we can do is we can actually build some DNA using the machinery that's in the DNA factory zone. And we're going to go and have a look at that right now. So this machine here is building us a set of DNA. So to pause here, what you can see is a DNA molecule built in Minecraft blocks. And it's a DNA molecule is 
you can see the spiral there in the yellow and see the red one in a minute but it's kind of twisted around and we've untwisted it here so you can make sense of what a dna molecule is so it's a very complicated molecule it has two backbones which are the purple and red wool that you see and then in between them is the important bit so this is the important information so these are four different types of molecule and they have slightly funny names they have cytosine guanine adenine and thymine and the combination of these different molecules it acts a bit like a code to tell us how to build proteins which do the jobs inside our cells. So you can see the twisted helix, double helix there. Uh, so that's what it kind of looks like when it's properly shaped. And you can see that those little red bars there would be the two nucleotides in the middle, the, those molecules connecting together. So you can see, yep, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine, and there's another one there called uracil, which will be important in a minute. But these are act as a code, and if we take the first letter of each one of them, we can write out a code in these three letter, what we call codons, or triplets. And the sequence you write determines uh, what amino acid is going to be used by a, a ribosome machine that you'll see later on. And you can see we've got many, many different ones of these amino acids, and each one has at least one, and some have lots of different ways of writing out the code which would code for them. So if some, it's a bit like having the same, two different words for the same thing. So I suppose, let's think uh, a, bit, a bit like pop and juice um, and fizzy, things like that same means the same thing but a different word now the thing is with dna is it's kind of stuck inside what we call the nucleus so this is within a cell there is a a little section of a cell called the nucleus and the dna is stuck in there it can't escape and it can't get out but we need to be able to read that dna and send those messages out in order to make proteins so we can't make proteins next to the dna but the dna can't escape from the nucleus so what we have to do is we have to transcribe that information. So we have to rewrite it into a different molecule which can escape from the nucleus. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that DNA sequence that you've just seen and you can actually then build a new sequence into a molecule called mRNA, which looks pretty similar. So let's have a go here. There we go. Let's so take our DNA sequence and we can read that and you can actually then create this mRNA which is very similar with the exception that our thymines are now this purple block here, this uracil. So you see we've got, gone from this blue lapis lazuli block to this purple block and this is now changing from thymine to uracil. You don't need to know why. It's complicated. It just happens. Anyway, moving on. So what you'll be able to do after this is then you can actually then, oh yeah, there's a bit of the secret command block structure which makes us all this work. So what we can then actually do is take that mRNA and it goes into something called a ribosome. And the ribosome is a bit like a mini factory. And what it does is it reads that mRNA, a bit like reading a book or a recipe. And using that recipe, and set of instructions, it can then build a protein. And the way it does this, we can show you in this little bit of animation here. So it starts to read the, this mRNA, runs through inside it, and once it finds a sequence which matches to one of those amino acids that we saw before, then it locks into place. Now the first amino acid for any protein is methionine, so that's why that one's there. And then what it does is it starts to read the rest. And then these other molecules called tRNA, so this is transfer RNA coming, and they start to read the rest of the mRNA. And then they have an amino acid attached to them, which matches to the letters that we saw before. And then they get added together. And this keeps going and keeps going until you reach a stop codon. And this tells the ribosome to stop reading the mRNA. Now here we've only got six amino acids. Um, real proteins, the ones you have inside your every all of your cells right now, 
Now, they uh, can be very small. It can be a few amino acids like this, but they can be very, very, very large. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands. And I thought what would be quite cool is to show you some of those sequences. So I've built these uh, amino acid sequences, and I've picked ones that have slightly funny names, because why not? So we, we sometimes name uh, these proteins funny names because there's a lot of them and we've run out of names. So this one is called Cerberus, named after the free-headed dog that protects the underworld in Greek mythology. Uh, these are all the amino acid sequences. You can go back and look at the little library from before to see what all those. This one, this is the WAP, Gazal, Amino, Globulin and NTR domain containing protein one. I don't know what it means either. Um, but again, see, this is 548 amino acids long. It's very big. And then this one, this one is the Dachshund homolog one. It doesn't look like a Dachshund. I don't know why we've called it Dachshund, but you know, it's science. So yes, so you've, I built these just so you can see what kind of the sequence that you get of all these amino acids and how it's not, you don't necessarily see all of the amino acids in a protein and sometimes the sequence is a bit strange. Now, what do we do with those proteins? Once they've been built, the proteins need to go to the right place in the cell to do the jobs they do. So each protein has a job or a set of jobs that it needs to do in the cell in order to keep the cell running and keep it alive. Now, what happens and how these cells get worked together is a little job that you're going to be doing in this zone, this protein transport zone. So protein transport is a bit like a train station. So each protein has a tag. In this case, it's a color station that it needs to go to. And what you can do is in this game is you have to find the proteins that need to go to the right station on the wall, then find them in the chests here, collect them, and then send them off to the right station and make sure that you've got them all to the right place. And it works a bit like this inside your cells as well. So each protein will have a tag, which is a bit like a ticket. And then if it has the right ticket, it'll go to a certain place and it'll be sent there on these rail carts here. Now inside your cells, it's on something called microtubules, but it's very similar and they're driven to their destination by proteins. It's pretty cool. And I was really helped by two YouTubers whose names are up on the screen right now, who really helped me with this. Uh, I was watching their videos to build both the train station and some of the protein sorting. So I'd recommend checking them out to have a look at what cool things they've been building. Yes, so I didn't build this all myself. I, I, I copied them a little bit, but I added the proteins. So yes, so I'm not gonna spoil this one. I'm gonna let you go and find that out for yourself. So yes, secret button, not very secret, but this will get you to the final zone. So this is the cell communication zone. So this is finding out a little bit more about how neurons talk to one another. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip down the axon that we mentioned before, which is the neuron's mouth. Now, the information is sent via electricity, so it travels really, really, really fast down here. So faster even than this, but I've sped it up a bit. It can go very, very, very fast. And once information gets to the end, it has to then be relayed to the other neuron on their dendrites. But how does that happen? So this cell communication lab tells you a little bit about how that works. So that little impressive door that you see behind me, that was built by uh, me, but it was a copy of one of Mumbo Jumbo's doors. We'll see it open in a minute. But this is what happens at the end. So this is called the synapse. And it's how these little yellow balls here filled with neurotransmitter, which is a chemical which gets released by the axon. And it kind of spews those out into this space and then hits those green receptors that you see there. And those receptors are on something called a spine, which you can see in black there. Now, the cell communication laboratory gives you a bit of an introduction. This one is a little bit more tricky. So if you find this hard to follow, oh yeah, cool door open. It's my favorite. It was really cool to build. But yeah, this one is trickier and I'm not going to go too much into this. There's a lot of information points. And again, I don't want to spoil everything for people who are going to be taking part and looking at this activity on Minecraft. And if people, if you haven't got a copy of Minecraft and you want me to show you around, you want to find out more about this bit, drop me an email and I'll do a little video for you and show you around this bit. But 
again, I want to keep things a little bit of a surprise, a little bit of interest. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm always looking out to build and add more to this as well. So if anyone is interested in giving me some ideas about what I should put in, how I can make it more exciting, any games I think should add into it, uh, please do send me a message. I'd love to hear from you and find out what you think I should be doing and adding more to this. So yes, so uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy playing with Neuron Safari and also all the other activities at the online Glasgow Science Festival this year. Thank you very much and goodbye.